Boom, what's up everyone? Welcome to Simulation. I'm your host, Alan Sakyan. Very pumped to be talking about I am self-actualization technology. We have Joyous Hart joining us on the show. Alan, such a pleasure. Thank it's you for having me on Simulation, thank you. So pumped for this. Me too. My gosh, you are building literally that principle that I've been talking about on the show all the time. Identify your North Star and pursue it with vigor and you're like, I'm gamifying that. <laughs> and it's so beautiful. I'm so pumped to showcase this and share it with other people. For those that don't know Joyce's background, he is a serial entrepreneur, transformation coach, and the co-founder and CEO of We Are, which is an evolved enterprise incubator and management company, and its flagship company, I Am. Through these enterprises, Joyce is focused on developing a socialized personal development and self-actualization technology to expand human consciousness, gamify self-realization, and redefine the process of lifelong learning. And you can find the links in the bio below to playiam.com as well as iamweare.xyz and Joyce's website, iamjoyous.xyz, also his Instagram and Facebook pages. Joyce, let's start things off with asking you, what are your thoughts on the direction of our world? Cool, meta. I love it. Perfect. The direction of our world is extremely exciting and inspiring to me. I believe we're at a, a quantum tipping point. And what we're going to see emerge over the next few years, to me, really lights up my passion because we're at such a, a crossroads of technological innovation. I mean, our technocracy is thriving. Um, you know, what you're seeing in fintech and transportation and really every different aspect of our life, massive evolutions. And now we're at this kind of critical tipping point of balancing the, the technological innovation with the evolution of the human experience. That's an individual and a collective um, evolution that we're seeing. And we're in the middle of that transformation right now. There's no way out of it. It's a biological imperative, really. We've created the perfect uh, sandbox to evolve our consciousness and grow as a species. And, and we've created these perceived challenges and tipping points around us environmentally, socially, financially, where there's no other way to go but through that transition. Uh, I think there's going to be a lot of disruption. And that's actually exciting, right? Because we want to disrupt things that are no longer working. There's archaic, limited programming and belief systems and models that may have worked for a time, may have really well worked for a time, and, and yet no longer serve us. And so we're going to see uh, complete transformation in most facets of our life, certainly in most industries. And yeah, I mean, some people look at it and they're a little bit apprehensive. They're like, God, so much change. How do I surf this? To me, it's really exciting. And I feel that humanity is about to really find its wings and take flight. Oof. Okay, this is so cool to illustrate it as an actual like sandbox or container where it's becoming a biological imperative for us to grow these wings and take flight, to level up our collective consciousness, individually and collectively. To be what? To be more what? First of all, to be more embodied, right? So, a lot, so I think as a species, we've constantly tried to get out of the human experience, whether it's through religion, trying to, like, well, one day I'll just be back with God, I'll be home, trying to leave in that way. A lot of escapism through media, through substance. You know, we're constantly trying to get out to ascend out of the form, and really the ascension is an internal process. I'm just using that word for fun, but really we're being called into a higher echelon of experience, into higher vibratory states of being. If everything is really just light and sound patterning, fundamentally it's vibration, it's, it's geometry, it's light patternings. We're being called into more, more complex and clear geometries and to higher frequency sets. And so, you know, what's, what's really exciting for me is we can really go anywhere from here. Where we've advanced scientifically and where we're beginning to advance spiritually, we can, it's a choose your own adventure life and we're getting to the point where people can augment their physical bodies. We may be translating consciousness into the digital verse. Um, it's, to me, there's so many possibilities and it's limitless, and yet the, the channel with all these infinite pathways that we're being pushed toward is to, I believe, come into more synergy as a species. So we're here on this rock hurtling through space. There's eight billion of us. And 
we've operated from a very individualistic stance for most of our remembered human history. And that's actually been a severe impediment to the mm, ecosystemic thrivability of the human race and our whole biosphere. You know, very self-centered, not connected to the other nodes of humanity, activities and behaviors have led us to certain paradigms of thinking, of, of business and industry that have, again, put us in the sandbox and pushed us to this position of growing. I feel that, you know, we're being pushed into what you could call a, a spiritual, um, almost type of transcendence, where we're going to move beyond some of the limiting functionality that we've experienced around the planet and actually step into more of the imprint that I believe humans have always carried. And, you know, there's so much dormant DNA, there's so mm. much in our bodies that has been either never activated or deactivated through mm. certain um, societal and familial spells of limitation compounded over millennia. And we're at a point of examining all those things. They're all getting unearthed and we're able to look at them, really look at the mirror of what's going on individually and societally, and then really see what's holding us back. And with all these tipping points, we kind of have to push through. So we're like, okay, we're, we're rising up. We're becoming more of a collective so we can actually begin exploring space, both outer and inner. And well, let's leave it at that. That's, that's for me to answer that question. Yeah. <laughs> this, this, this amount of, of dormantness in our actualizing ascending potential that hasn't been fully realized and and in many ways seems like around the world is the reason why so many of us feel some of the mental health issues or lack of community, lack of love, these types of things. And to build technologies that help humans actualize that unique blueprint that we have to bring these beautiful fruits to ourselves, our families, our community, society at large. I'm so pumped to talk about, continue to talk about this with you. Um, quickly, before we jump into journey, what would you say are some of the key things today that are important to unsubscribe mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. and on the other side also to subscribe to? Beautiful. I love, I love looking at both sides. Um, one of the biggest things I believe it's time to unsubscribe from is that source or your prime directive, your North Star, is anywhere, is anywhere outside of yourself. Boom. <laughs> it's to bring it back to yourself, right? Yeah. And so on the flip side of that, one thing to subscribe to is realizing that you are creator. Mm -hmm. And it's said, you know, in every religious text, and every spiritual text, um, if we're going to stick to that route, you can also bring it down into, qu into quantum mechanics and physics. But really, any which way you look at it, you are the source of your reality. You're a unique lens in, let's call it, a quasi-crystal of consciousness. And everything you're experiencing is a reflection back to you from what you're transmitting out. You're receiving what you're transmitting. And so to, to really s mm, allow yourself more spaciousness from seeking the external source to validate what you already are and really to take more time to dive inward mm. and realize that your inner verse is your actual map to the outer verse, to the universe, and so to dive, to dive deeper in. Um, Hmm. That goes hand in hand with shifting from victim consciousness to creator consciousness. And there's a U-turn there. There's a big U-turn to go from, to shift from the habits of things are happening to me to things are happening for me. And it's of my own design. On some level, in my subconscious, in my higher consciousness, I'm architecting or agreeing to experiences, relationships, you know, life dynamics to allow me to grow versus, oh, this is like, this is happening to me, how could someone do this to me? Really realizing, internalizing, this is a gift. And I'm so grateful I created this experience for myself to go through whatever fire I'm going through to transform whatever's no longer working. Th those to me are really key. Um, I also unsubscribing from, um, you know, base level consciousness media. Most of the media we're saturated in is yeah. very, focused on stimulating fight or flight. St you know, we're, we're over, our adrenals are being completely depleted because we're 
subscribing to media, mainstream news outlets, a lot of mainstream vid movies, and even online content that is really reinforcing negative limiting patterns and beliefs. So much violence, right? So much fear and shame and doubt. You're feeding that to yourself, right? It's just the same thing as putting food in your body. You're taking in those frequencies, you're taking those images and those frames and they're layering into your consciousness. So unsubscribe as much as you can from the sources of information that really aren't creating the reality you want. Like, if you're looking at a horror movie, is that the world you want to live in? No, so why are you subscribing to that and telling your subconscious that's a reality and allowing that to be a permission slip in your life? On the inverse, subscribe to things like simulation. Subscribe to things that are enriching your spirit and expanding your mind and opening your heart. Um, and, and the last to go along with that, since we're already on that subject, is looking at what you're putting in your body. So we're talking about media. Also, really look at the food you're putting in your body. Yeah. Unsubscribe from corporations uh, that they're only focused on the bottom line. They're focused on providing you the base level, nutritional, if even that, value to allow you to feel full. Um, th those channels of it's in pharmaceuticals, it's in food, but really, like, really be attentive to what you're taking in your body. And, and stop subscribing to things that don't have your best interests in mind, that are really only looking at shareholder value and really don't care about your health and well-being. Whoa, epic. So the unsubscribe to believing that the North Star lies with exogenous substances, that the North Star is endogenous, is within us, and then to be able to pursue that divinely, unsubscribe. I love how you talked about the video or what we've taken as input like layers as frames into our consciousness. When you like think about it that way, then it's like, do you really want those frames to be layered in and impact um, who you are? And that's a really good way to put it. And same thing with food as well. Yeah, unsubscribe from self-dealing institutions, fake foods, fake news, um, uh, fake physicians, fake teachers, mm -hmm. all these types of things. Um, I love that. That was great. And those are and, sub, and subscribe to this North Star from being within um, media that helps you get to that point of, of actualization. Let's talk about the journey, Joyce. Who were you growing up that got you interested in what you care about today? Um, well, to my detriment and and to my great benefit, I was a rebel. So I tested every boundary. Uh, I didn't take anything at face value just because someone was older or they had credentials and they were a teacher, police officer, just because they were telling me something. I really felt into, is this right? Is this kind? Does it make sense? Does it resonate? Does it actually feel right? Because I'm not just going to take it at face value because you say so. Um, so I pushed a lot of boundaries, played with a lot of dimensions, peered under everything, looked through every doorway. Um, and thankfully I had parents that really supported that. My mother is a medical doctor. Mm who realized that mainstream modern medicine is great if you're having an emergency and pretty much for nothing else. Mm. It's absolutely the opposite of self-care and preventative mm. medicine. So she went from being an MD to an ND and basically stepped almost into shamanism from there. My father, just to keep the play on the shamanism, was basically a corporate shaman. He would never call himself that. He was talking about core why, discovering your core purpose and core why way before Simon Sinek. Yeah. He was the first one really in the corporate sphere uh, talking about emotional literacy and talking about how most of the top end societal issues are related to, almost none of them are IQ based. They're all EQ based. Ah. All the big issues that companies have with their employees, what they're looking for, all the breakdowns amongst team dynamics are EQ based. So he, talked, so he really figured out how to bridge the heart mind gap, how to bridge EQ and IQ. Mm. That's his company, EQ IQ. Mm. And what a combo <laughs> for parents. Damn. <laughs> <was> very blessed. <laughs> Very blessed, won, won, won the cosmic lottery there. Yeah. And um, so I grew up saturated in the work of my parents, which was all around holistic frameworks around wellness, psychologically, uh, spiritually, mentally, physically. You know, my father also was very deep in integrity, um, courage, developing your courage quotient, identifying the different types of courage, like yeah. the courage to dream and put forth that dream. A lot of people who have that courage don't have the courage to see current reality and vice versa. So identifying your courage quotient. So I grew up in that, and that really inspired me, particularly as I came out in the world and from such a loving, open, um, supportive household to see the stark contrast with so many of the my friends' families and just in the greater world. 
um, it, well, did two things. Ultimately, it inspired me to step into the work I'm doing now and really devote my life to socioeconomic enrichment and figuring out what the core levers are to help as many human beings as possible feel that love, feel that joy, feel that authenticity, and feel that empowerment in claiming their own path. Because my parents really were open with me. I'm not going to school this week. I'm done with it. They're like, what are you going to learn about? Mm. What are you passionate about? Go learn about it and present to us at the end of the week. Yeah. So they were really open with me. Um, what that did, though, being in such an incredible bubble of consciousness, then going out in the greater world, it, it created a lot of uh, conflict within, within me. I, it devel I developed a lot of depression and anger in my teenage years at the angst of the human condition. You know, feeling the miracle of this life, feeling how precious it is, right? Einstein said, either everything's a miracle or nothing is. You have two ways of looking at it. And so I grew up in everything's a miracle, and we're so blessed. And then I saw the exact opposite modeled so many ways to me from all the media, from interactions that other people were having with each other. And so that put me in a tailspin. Um, you know, in full transparency, it, it put me into substances, nothing hard, but, you know, mycelial consciousness and, and cannabis and things to, to, to figure out how to modulate what I was feeling because I, so, I was almost overwhelmed by the amount of pain and suffering and disconnection that I was experiencing um, with humans within themselves Amongst, them, amongst themselves in communication and with the planet and how they were treating you know, everything around them. Um, so that journey, you know, that led me to explore a lot of different realms. I worked with a lot of different shamans from different lineages from around the world, thanks to my mother. Um, and it, it was, it, I'm lucky I made it through, honestly. It was, it was a very tough period. Um, I kept sending out signals to the universe. I said, I don't know why I chose to be here or why I was sent here, but I'm ready to go. Like this is, I don't know what's happening. And this is a weird thing to be a 13, 14 year old and mm -hmm. having these dialogues. Yeah. You know, I was like, I, I, I don't know how to relate here. I think this race is really juvenile and I don't know what to do. This was me as a juvenile and the only way I could interpret the reality around me. The way that was answered was uh, when I left home, I moved to Colorado. I had a series leading up to this, to this shift, I had a series of very life altering experiences. Um, that culminated in me a few months after I moved to Colorado having my first near-death experience. So I stopped breathing for 12 minutes, scared the crap out of my friends. We were in the woods. I just face, fell over, face-planted. Um, didn't breathe for 12 minutes. They tried to resuscitate me. Eventually, they were like, he's gone. So all they could do was go into meditation. They didn't know what else to do. We're in the middle of nowhere. That 12 minutes for me was timeless. It was, it was pure bliss. Uh, really hard to contextualize into words, and I won't, even, I won't go too deep into it, uh, but for the sake of the simulation, we'll just touch on, you know, essentially, I lifted out, could see reality as a holographic layer, could see the earth grid that I was on, could see my body, very quickly started flowing through different timescapes and seeing different uh, realities, and, and something in my consciousness would know, it's like, oh, Babylon, oh, Egypt, and I, but I was seeing it almost, have you ever seen the Alex Gray painting, like, like an energetic grid? There wasn't the, the, outer shell on it, just the energetic grid. And I surfed through these realities for what felt like forever. And all of a sudden, I was in this white undulating field, infinite in every direction, with these golden pearls connected by string, all connected, this grid of golden pearls, infinite in every direction, every single one representing a lifetime. And every one that you focus on would become the center of this undulating grid. And I went in and actually experienced multiple lifetimes, not living out a whole lifetime, but going in and having actual embo like embodied experiences in lifetimes and then kept, and then I would be back in this grid and at a certain point this this knowing it was a resonance it, it was a voice but it was but you're in a place that's voiceless this this knowing that that vibrated in said you're going into form mm. like you're going back Whoa. into a lifetime and I said wonderful the lifetime I'd been in was still a memory because it was recent but it wasn't it wasn't any more, like I, I didn't miss it, and I wasn't expecting to go back to it. And so then everything spiraled, like this whole undulating field spiraled into light, and scared my friends because my arms shut up, and I remember everything was the highest tone and pure white light, and then slowly everything filtered in, and everything had to reset. You know, here it was like hands, sky, trees, earth, body, joyous, and had to reset and had to like remember who, who I was with. It took me a couple weeks to really re-embody from that experience. But that was the first of a series of major experiences that pushed me through, 
through certain dimensions of the simulation that what that particular experience did for me was it allowed me to have zero fear of transition or what people call death of leaving this avatar mm. zero fear yeah whoa um, which is permeated to this day it's cellularly encoded and more importantly for the first time since I'd been maybe 12 made me so enthralled and joyful and inspired to be alive and so grateful for this yes, opportunity yes. to be an individual uh -huh. and have such a distinct separation between us as individuals instead of kind of this kind of blurred energy like we're really distinct yeah, yeah. and wow I can have I have human emotion wow oh, I stubbed my toe that hurts oh it's so cool I get to feel that so oh. it totally reoriented my whole my whole relationship with reality whoa so then this takes us to when you were wondering about that this kind of like all these different like why are you here the feeling of why you were here and and what this world was like and maybe what was my point of experiencing all of this world and then um, you the the NDE that you had just the, the putting those words to it um, that was so beautiful that story and it's uh, I'm, I'm just even trying to conceptualize where you were and how you were feeling mm. is so cool for me to do that and mm. to live through that vicariously and 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 then when when you're when you're when you're seeing all that and being all that feeling all that it then you get to this to the re-embodiment and when you come come back and it clicks that everything that we can feel and experience here is gorgeous yeah yeah it, and 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 the and the deepest most intense experiences of our life are the greatest gifts and you're like wow okay this is this too shall pass even if I play this out for a lifetime even if I don't choose to dive in and transmute this which I actively do tr transmute anything I come across as a block but even if I choose to fantastic because it's the blink of an eye for the I am consciousness that that's pretending to be me Right, and that that experience was was the it was the cosmic hall pass. It was like okay, everything's okay. It's okay. You see, it's all right. And it's all perfect. And then I had experiences after that, including a couple other NDEs, that allowed me a deeper. That was more of just like take it all in. Then I was actually getting direct avatar reflections and direct beings basically giving me feedback loops as to why I was here. Mm. So. Um, so the journey continued and, and you know basically in several other experiences I was reminded by other beings that are not embodied, quasi-physical, beyond physicality, that of, of why I was here, of why I chose to sign up, of how great of an honor it was to be on earth, of how many infinite souls want to be here, of how long that waiting list is to embody here, and, and of the really big mission, we all have a big mission, everyone does. And everybody's a genius. But if you try to teach a fish to climb a tree, it'll spend its whole life thinking it's stupid, as Albert Einstein also said. And so, you know, it was, it was a beautiful gift to, to have the universe so strongly respond to my deep calling and yearning and intentions and prayer. You know, however you want to verbalize that, my, my output, to have the direct interface in, uh, reflection of, here, this is why you're here. Let's, let's show you. Um, and what that showed me was, I'm here as a social architect to help reinvent certain paradigms of human relationship. And that's both in community building, community design and building. I was in the regenerative community space for quite a while and that's something I'm very passionate about is redesigning urban scapes to be truly regenerative, which is as much as you're depleting, you're then replenishing. Mm -hmm. um, and what I saw clearly in some of these experiences but then became much clearer as I was working in building physical communities was that it wasn't the physical architecture. The f clean, radiant, free energy technologies, the advanced food and water systems, the bioarchitecture, that's all easy. It's all here. Whether or not it's fully out in the open yet, you know, mm. that's also part of what I believe is emergent in our world in the next yeah. decade, um, which is going to you know, change everything. It was the social architecture. 
It was the modeling on health and wellness, and most importantly, education. And what, what it really came to me was that the way we train ourselves to be fundamentally is our reality. We're, we're programming the com biological computers that we are with the, the scripts for what runs our reality. And then our reality can only offer us that which we're programming it to offer us. And so I realized as I, as I looked at the started diving in the statistics on education, because I had had a very rough time in education. I tried everything. I was homeschooled, public, private, did everything. Just trying to take, you know, see what would work. And I found great pieces in different methodologies, but none of them quite worked. And it was, there were several pieces. One is the environment itself. The environments are not conducive to actually, um, yeah. to, to being inspired to being empowered, to being being present. I mean, your average school building is, you're under these harsh fluorescent lights and these really uncomfortable chairs, this little desk, sitting for hours a day, eating crappy food at the cafeteria. It's not conducive to you actually optimizing your creativity and, and being excited to be there and retaining that information. And then it was also the content that was being taught mm -hmm. and how the content was being taught. Yeah. And the fact that the whole thing was designed, we're basically monocropping humans. We know that doesn't work with plants, it doesn't work with humans. There really wasn't, particularly in the formative years, at least up until college, for most people in education around the world, it, it, there is no choose your own adventure, there is no personal uh -huh. development or uh -huh. personal discovery. It's this is the way to do it, you have to do it this way at this time or you're gonna fail. And, and I realized that we were creating a ton of blocks for ourselves. We're really limiting our human potential by the way we train ourselves to be. And so, that is something that, after being shown it for several years, I chose to step fully into and, and devote myself as part of the regenerative economic movement, mm -hmm. at, as part of a singularity that we're approaching to in terms of spirituality and science, yes. and technology and biology, yes. was the juxtaposition of the systems, frameworks, products, technologies related to evolving human learning systems and personal development. You, in a sense, you were carrying around this mentality with you after your NDE and, and through the next steps of your life where you were just looking around you and seeing all the things that you could upgrade and update and make it more holistic and inspiring and, and make the process is better for self and collective actualization. I love that mentality. We talk a lot about having that mentality when you walk through the world. And then also just this, you're so right about the lack in activation of this unique North Star that's within every single person because it is just become in its sense just the most standardized monoculture of education across the planet. Okay. Now then, where did the I am come from? Was this kind of the story that led you to be like, okay, I need to create and co-create this with other people. What I am is that fills that void, that makes it fun for me to figure out what my North Star is and pursue it in a gamified way. Yeah, so, so for me the transition was, I was working on community, on, on land projects. So the last one that I did with my beloved Sandy, uh, and a good friend of mine was up in Oregon. It was a thousand acre ranch called the New Paradigm Ranch mm. as, a, as a showcase center for new types of social architecture and, and physical technologies. Um, the transition was I realized I wanted a bigger scalability factor. I wanted a bigger ripple of impact and that building land-based centers is very important. And I'm so grateful to people who are doing that to create examples for existing urbanscapes on how to begin to redesign and retool what's already there to make it work better, to make it work better for people and for the planet. So there's actually a caring capacity to continue. Um, but I realized for me the calling was much larger systemic, um, mm. yeah, much larger systemic. Uh, Consciousness transformation. Yeah, like, like what are the, what are the, the platforms and protocols that are going to allow tens of millions, hundreds of millions of people to quickly onboard into yeah, yeah. aligning with their North yes, Star. Yes. And then building those different um, aspects of that future that we want to live in. Yes. Yeah, yeah. 
I like that. that that's a similar mentality that um, I carry in that I think a lot of people um, are f trying to figure out is um, like one color on the color wheel is to do the um, the 1,000 acre plot of land or to do like a family or whatever it is. And there's like another color on the color wheel which is to get something out to billions of people that enables them to express their own creative uh, building of a future that that like compounds in a sense if you can get it out to that many people yes. and then they start building in a yes. more awakened way. Yeah. And what, and what, I, what we figured uh, is, is that when you can do that, it's actually much more effective because a lot of the, I believe that a lot of the big challenges humankind is facing can all stem back to that lack of, of human development, of the lack of authenticity. If you're not really passionate, we can go in the statistics about how many people are disengaged in their work, don't love their life, or unhappy, it's kind of astounding. How can you show up for your community, really? How can you show up for a business partner or, or an intimate partner? How can you show up for the planet? You can't, because you're not even showing up for yourself. And so you're constantly living in this state of like anxiety and like this angst, even behind the scenes, you know, everything might be good, I'm just gonna go to the bar tonight, everything's great, but you, you're, you're not clearing this lens, so how are you gonna see what's clearly in front of you to even offer assistance, mm. to care, or even if you care, to even be able to offer something that's really valuable to that person or situation if you're not even doing that for yourself. So I started, a, I started building a platform and a couple months into that is when I connected with my partner Lucien Vettel. Mm -hmm. Lucien, you know, I've been using the I am framework for quite a while it just as a reference point in consciousness because I am is a very powerful proclamation. Yeah, right? it's the trinity, teach us why. I am, right? So, yeah, teach why. So, so you have the, the masculine and the feminine principle and then the one. And so you have also like you can like holy father, mother, child, you can view it different ways, but it's the trine. And I am is a reference point in consciousness. So it's like you're putting in a command in the, in the, in the computer, in the simulation, uh -huh, you're like uh -huh. I am, and then the whole simulation goes, what, <laughs> what are you? And whatever follows that is true, right? So we're always spelling. We're spelling, we're casting spells, we're uh, programming, uh, we're spells. Uh -huh. and spell some casters. spells are master spells. I am is a master spell. It's been medically ingrained for millennia, okay. and it's just, it's the ultimate affirmation. I am prosperous, I am loving, I am father, and the universe is able to reflect and respond to that. So it's a declaration of embodiment and of consciousness, and so it's very important. Lucian independently channeled I am and we are on top of a mountain. He had a very clear download. He was running a nonprofit called Game Desk at the time, creating interactive learning technologies, mainly for middle schoolers, but for K through 12 education yeah. and making the process of learning really fun and experiential. Yeah, cool. And he'd reached a juxtaposition where he's like, this is really cool. Like, we're having a lot of fun here. We're even doing, you know, emotional entrainment, biofeedback games where now kids in LA don't have to go to detention. They're going and learning how to modulate their, their anger and their frustration through a game and Whoa. all kinds of really fun technologies yeah. and incredible breakthroughs. And he was like, this isn't enough. Mm. We're, still, we're still taking mainly what's here, this common core, yeah. and making it really fun right. and increasing pre and post. You know, like, oh look, they're learning it better, it's deeper, they're retaining it longer but it's still limited. Where's the communication? Where's the compassion, the emotional literacy, the courage, the, the personal development is lacking. And so he was on a deep soul, soul journey, a vision quest, if you will. What's next? How do I really take my background as a filmmaker, as a professor, and as an interactive technologist and, and create something that is actually going to turn the tide in the academic world, which has a lot of impedances to evolution due to the bureaucracy and economics involved with education. And what came in very clear, like an NDE like a, a NDE experience, like so strong and clear, where it's first time actually meeting other beings, Whoa. was you are to build, I am and we are. And he got a glimmer of what that was. Very shortly thereafter, he, he started putting he started everything in his life, he started orienting everything in his work towards this North Star. Yes. Very shortly thereafter the universe brought us together. And I shared with him what I was what I was working on. And he said, "I don't know if this is 
good, great, or a complete conflict of interest, but we're working, we want to do the same thing. Yeah. And I said, great, because I'm about the results. I'm about the transformation of human consciousness. I don't give a crap about what the brand is. I really don't. I'll put that aside. I will join you. We ended up becoming 50-50 partners, but I didn't even care about that. Like We became you know, equal co-creators in the construct that he had originally channeled, but we had the same background information. We were both on the same mission, the same North Star, and I said, I see your background, I see your passion, I love this branding, because I already work with this consciousness, and that's all of it. The I am, attuning who I am, and then the we are and the synarchy. And so that journey started three years ago, when we, when we first came together. And then we played around for a while in consciousness and then began to take the framework and test it in different iterative analog experiences, first with middle schoolers, and then as we realized we're, we were going to build a larger social architectural framework than just something nuanced for K through 12, although there's a whole white label aspect to bring it back, particularly into the K through 12 sandbox, was we evolved from working with middle schoolers to really working with people from all different socioeconomic backgrounds, mm -hmm. all different demographics. And, um, and for us, it was very important before we jumped into, and this is a first for either him or I, in just kind of jumping right into building something. We're like, we're not gonna build a technology until we understand the technology. Because this, this is something that already exists in the simulation. This already exists in the hologram of consciousness. And we're just building a physical uh, access port or interface for what's already happening. And we really need to understand that. If we're gonna build life match algorithms that are connecting people to the core of who they are, to their North Star, and helping them with socialized supports to develop who they are, and then connect them to people and experiences that are most aligned with who they are, we've gotta be really accurate. So it's not just taking people on you know, random detours in their life. Like, How do we really build an interface that can operate as kind of a meta, intuitive, intelligence that's there to support and guide you through your personal growth journey where it still retains that unique creative sovereignty and choose your own adventure where we're not telling you what to do we're, where op the system is offering you options that are most aligned with who you are and we'll go into how we actually determine what that is and and its whole, des its whole design is not to extract value from you, but to provide the most value. How can we support you in fully embodying who you are, your unique value and gifts, where you're having fun and feeling supported the whole way, and you're able to step in and share that value with the world, and actually that is your vocational path, rather than, well, no, I can't be, a, I can't be an artist, I need to be a lawyer. Bullshit. Absolutely you're an artist. You could be a lawyer and an artist. We want to support you in whatever you're most passionate about. And I say we as the collective and the interface is supporting that. We want to support you in really being the, f the whole you, the fully authentic you, because that's the greatest gift to yourself and to all of us. Because if you're not in that space, we're all suffering from it. And so that was, that was the impetus for I am and we are. In Lucian. Lucian, Lucian yeah. Lucian is the other co-founder of this. Wow. Wow, Lucian's background too so interesting with what he was doing with the middle schoolers, engaging them more um, experientially in the learning, and then how you come in um, also with such a deep drive for transforming consciousness and transforming education and the North Star journey and how aligned those two were when you guys met. And um, that seems like a very cool divine synergy. Now, now um, as we do I Am and talk about this, um, Let's actually let's actually pull up some of the stuff that we have to, to show throughout. Um, so okay, so explain um, some of this. You kind of gave sure. a little bit of, on this on the disconnected feeling and the unfulfillment. These were the numbers that you were talking about. Eighty-five yeah. percent are are working in jobs that they dislike and disengaged in. Yeah. And then I love what we're going to show next, which is um, what the engagement platform looks like, the self-actualization technology looks like. But yeah, let's walk through this. Beautiful. So really, you know, the, the top end issue is people are fundamentally, most people are disconnected from their core sense of self, from their core value, their core potential, their core purpose, their core passions. And you can see that explicitly in some of these statistics. So, you know, what we put here as the problem is people are, most people are disconnected and unfulfilled in their lives in a general sense and they're not monetizing what they love, and they don't have any interface for sense-making around their self-discovery and their self-growth 
and from that place meaning, meaningful human interaction with aligned peers and mentors who can support them and showing them the most opportune places for social value exchange to receive value and to share the value they are. You know, statistically, the reason we talk about people being disconnected and uh, unfulfilled and not, and not feeling that they can monetize who they are and what they love and feeling they have to go do something else other than who they are to make money is you have 67% of people in this country who have been, you know, nationwide polls that state that they're unhappy. That's really sad. I mean, that's depressing. Yeah. Like 67% of people. Yeah. And that's about the same. It's, 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 it's about the same globally. So you've got close to 70% of people around the world classifying themselves as unhappy. And you have over 300 million people depressed with, or diagnosed with chronic depression, which is a societal issue. It's not, most people really aren't fundamentally depressed. It's the fact that they're in an echo chamber that doesn't work, like this is not yeah, right. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Not, I'm not being authentic. I'm not really living my potential. Yeah. And so, and, but everyone's telling me this is normal. I'm, I'm doing something I hate. And now I'm just going to suppress and repress and numb and whatever I'm going to yeah, do. Yeah. And, and then you see that moving forward, 80, it's 85% of people around the world, it's a little bit lower in, in the States, state that they're in jobs that they dislike and are disengaged in. What does that do for human productivity and creativity? Think about what that does for the workplace, for innovation. And what does that do for the human spirit? Like how much are we atrophying our creative potential yeah. and our brilliance to live into a dysfunctional, archaic social modeling system that doesn't work? It doesn't work, right? And so that's the, that's the top end issue is there's no platform or interface for sense making who you are and supporting you in, social, mm. in developing who you are, rewarding you for developing who you are, yeah. connecting you to the most aligned supports and people so that you can actualize who you are and monetize all the aspects that you have to offer the world. I'm, in, I'm interested to know how um, you figure this out, that you, f you help people figure out who they are you help them take their beautiful creative journey along the path of knowing themselves and getting to their North Star. And there's support systems along the way of connecting with other people that help you on your journey. You help them on their journey. I really want to know how you like identify these aspects yeah. of me. Like, let's take me, for example. How do you, would you know what beautiful. my North Star is? And how would you, beautiful. yeah, all these types of things. Yeah. I wouldn't, you would. Okay. And so the interface is designed to allow you to, ha to play the game of figuring that out. So okay. we have our own unique I am blueprint or self-mapping system. And a part of that system is a swipe-based, at least on the mobile app, a swipe-based interface for selecting attributes you're most interested in. Like this. Like is this. this. So okay. this, so you have different, de imagine decks of, of, of virtue and values cards, of skill cards, of life blocks or life challenge cards, right? And so you're able to go through these cards. You, if, I, if I were to tap there on courage, it's not gonna work in the deck, but if I were yeah. to tap on courage, it's it like would a, flip over. It's a, oh, it's a, okay, so it's swiping yes or no, but also clicking or tapping? Yeah, so there's, so, okay. so if I tap on it, it's gonna flip over, it's gonna show me the most universal definition of what, in this case, courage is. It's gonna show me best practices and tips, some imagery, just real quick at a glance, what is this? If okay. I don't know, if you don't right? Know. Okay. And then I can okay. choose, I can swipe into, is that something that, and we're actually gonna do it to the four quadrants. So, mm. is this something that I have mastery in? Mm. Is this something that I'm developing? Is this something I'm seeking to develop or seeking support in? Or is this something I'm not really interested in? Whoa. And then different sliders to be to, to say, well, look, let's break that apart. So what's your, so if you say, I have something I have mastery and then it's gonna break down a thing. Well, is that across the board or let's, let's break out some, some sliders here. Subcategories. Subcategories. Of courage, courage in the workplace. Yeah. Courage with family. Mm. Courage with friends, right? So there's different types of courage. Some people are very courageous at home and not courageous in the workplace and vice versa. So then we're allowing people to get deeper into the granularity of that. After you go through the self-selection process, which is dynamic, you can go back to it at any time, and it's gonna get in increasingly more intelligent as to which cards to show you first based on who it knows you to be, based on your actions in the system, based on community reflections, and some of the other integrated third-party uh, 
self-mapping or persona mapping systems we're integrating. Which You're are, building a psychometric profile yes. for the user based on their them swiping into mastery or seeking or developing or not interested it's, on the skill mm, cards. Yeah, and virtue cards and life blocks. And so, virtue cards and life blocks. Yeah. Okay, so, Okay, yeah. so then you may show a card about like f issues with family or issues with some other trauma or um, exactly, and then I'll put myself in the in where in, I in those quadrants, in the quadrants exactly. Whoa! And so what this does is ultimately we I, there's not there's not I'm not going to show you a screen here that that will exemplify this, but ultimately what it creates is a a map. So we have a GPS for our car. Why don't we have one for our soul? Yeah. So it creates a map for your innerverse, if you will. It creates a map of you a dynamic map that you're able to interact with to see the constellations of what is, here's the core of you, and then what's closest in, in terms of skills and virtues, in terms of what's most cultivated, most mastered, most embodied, to developing, to still on the periphery, like I want to develop but it's still a weakness, to, so you actually have a map and view, yes. a dynamically shifting map of who you are and share that with other people. So at a glance, you can be like, this is who I am. This is, who I this am. is my mastery. These are the things I've mastered. These are the things I'm developing. Oh my gosh, right These now, these are the places the I can really support. The thing that we have for this is like a resume, right? I we're know. like, <laughs> so we're like, static. A, so static. We're like a, like a one minute video about like, <laughs> like what someone is. But like a beautiful, well illustrated map of who I am based on like my core values and principles at the center. Yeah. Um, and then um, the outside, more outside is like what I'm developing, what I'm like seeking to develop as a skill set, what, yeah. and like what I'm not to. Like, so then we can then, so there's a couple things here. First is I love this GPS for the North Star. That's huge yeah. um, for the car, but not for the soul. I love that. Yeah. And then also then there's this like overlay process, right? Of like taking joyouses and looking at it with Ori's or Sandy's exactly. and seeing like, okay, well, how do they relate? Where are there's no connect? Is there's no connections, not good fit? Or maybe there are some really important connections where one person can teach another person some skills, yeah. that type of thing. You own the data yes. to this part. So interesting yes. as well. So yeah, walk us down some of those avenues. Yeah, absolutely. So so let's uh, we'll, we'll pop over here. Okay. So knowing yourself is very important, right? That's the first part. Know thyself. Yes, know thyself. Now take that age-old aphorism and socialize it. Mm -hmm. So how do we socialize personal development? Flip the script from self-help to we help, and create. That's what people are yearning for. If you look at the trends, millennials are spending twice the amount of baby boomers and Gen X combined on personal development. Yeah. And we're looking at people hacking existing social platforms trying to find a way to to talk about deep human issues around you know deep deep personal development human growth issues and it's very limited that interface those interfaces are not designed facebook's not designed for those types of communications you have people commenting and commenting and commenting yeah. it, it's it's really uh it's not designed for it, but people want it yeah so you're seeing what we're seeing by analyzing what's happening on social media platforms, and then looking at trends in the $3.7 trillion wellness industry, it, are all these signals of a shift where self-improvement is becoming mainstream and it's becoming socialized. So we're really looking to create the first social platform to, to meet that market demand. So here we get into socialized personal. Know thyself and socialized. socialized. Yeah, socialized, yeah. yeah. It's key, yeah, right? Yeah, be because yeah. it's the I am and the we are. You need the reflection. You want the reflection. You, I want to be able to offer my gifts to you for yes. whatever type of exchange, monetary, direct value exchange. There's different ways of exchanging within the platform. And, and also to support me, even if it's just through reflection as an accountability coach or just someone saying, yeah, great job. You up-leveled your entrepreneurship. Yeah, I yeah. see that you reached level two in your quest. Awesome. Yeah. Just have those reflections. <laughs> and everything today, you see it's great things. Teachable, <clears throat> Udemy. Udemy. Um, there's a lot of great content creation platforms that are allowing people to take their mastery with no technical skill sets whatsoever and translate that into curricular pathways online. But they have no social functionality. There's no analytics dashboard to sense make or track your, your development across your different trajectories of what you're working on and there's no social functionality. Yeah. So we need that sense making apparatus for driving ourselves towards the North Star and the socialized aspect of it to know who these nodes are that we can connect with to maximize our success to get there. It's well, key, especially key, because, you know. because in the way that our world works right now, it can be a very lonely path to identify and more importantly, to actively embody and express 
your North Star. Yeah. Because there's so many reflections from your family, from your educators. People are like, don't, don't work on that. This is what you need to focus yeah, on, yeah, right? Yeah. This is the goal. The test this of is, faith come This in. is your million dollar a year yeah. career. You need to go this way. And so it can be lonely and isolating. And so you want to have peer groups and mentor groups that can support you in that process. And so I'm going to circle back to what yes. you talked about, but okay. you know, I just want to for the continuity of the flow. So yes. each attribute, confidence, entrepreneurship, uh, algebra, you know, as, this, as the system really becomes diverse, each attribute has its own wall. So that's an evergreen content feed of all the quests, content, posts, everything related to that attribute. To confidence, to whatever that attribute in this, is. In this, in this example, confidence, And that's exactly. like your level of, is number two, is like your second yeah, level. Yeah, so that's your level, and so then you okay. see on the right well, yeah, to the right, right side, side of the screen, uh -huh. you see, so you, there's an exploration wall and then there's the quest wall. So you can actually activate a quest. So I'm questing into confidence. I'm choosing to embody and master confidence okay. or whatever that attribute is. Whoa, okay. And then you're able, and this, this is where it gets really fun and gamified because we're actually creating a token economy where you'll actually be rewarded, incentivized for completing quests. Quest. So you're, you're benefiting and you're, you're, you're earning something to upgrade your digital avatar and to to exchange for services and premium content within the system yeah. for self-growth. So it's like, yeah. thank you for becoming the best version of you possible. We're going to reward, reward you for you that. Reward you for it too. So and there's you, an incentive. Exactly. An incentive. And, 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 you, and you, can track, you can track your development and your progression, how much time, how many challenges, how many things you've completed along that trajectory and who you've connected with along the way. So in each quest pathway, there's individual activities and, and, and content practices. There's partner and there's small small and large group. And we're also where it gets really fun is blending this into the physical. So we already see this, this layering as technology and biology be, are beginning to meet in so many interesting ways. We really do need to, we do need to balance the BI, the biological quotient with the AI, right? Mm. We need to balance those quotients and they are coming into harmonization uh, or they're seeking to. There's a kind of emergence of a new type, the new life yeah. forms are basically emerging through technology, what we consider artificial intelligence and human consciousness and, and human biology and what's, what's happening. It's, it's getting really interesting and kind of like, uh, kind of very super luminal at the way things are, are, are uh, evolving. Ideally our biometric states are constantly being um, fed to predict the, uh, the development of pathologies and then us to be able to take actionable steps. Similarly to North Star growth with our passions exactly. is our North Star growth with our, um, with our biology, uh, for our health, our exercise, our yes. sleep, um, these types of things. Um, yes. Th that, that's you know, it's an interesting smash together. And the way we want to meet that is this platform, one of our KPIs is actually to increase the frequency and depth of meaningful in-person connection and value exchange. And so we're using geoproximal alerting yeah. and moving into mobile AR and the beta and beyond, yes, yes. all the way building towards wearables yes. to lower the barriers of screen time between human connection. So there's bonus points and certain quest levels that you can only complete by having live experiences. experiences. Boom. Right. Yeah. You don't have to meet a specific person, but some experiences, like you might want to complete a, a mastery level challenge course, and it might require you to to flash mob confidence in a park. Oh, it might require yeah. you to meet other people. Yeah, um, that's a great, I like, I love that example for mastery. Yeah, can you flash mob in a park? Yeah, for, for confidence. Yeah, right, can we, can, we can do that with anything. Yeah, and then is it self-reporting or how would you know, would other people report that, Alan, complete this task of going Well, to the there's park? different yeah. ways of that. Okay. So there's different, there's different metrics for how it's reported. There is self-reporting and that's, but that also includes geoproximal tagging. Was this person actually there? Mm -hmm. Um, so that so if you're reporting that something's happened, we can the system can say, okay, well, geoproximately they were there. Mm -hmm. Is also prompts to upload videos, to upload photos. Okay. Other people can give reflections, and that's incentivized. So we're finding a way of of cool. limiting bad actors because yeah. really no one wins in the game in the of self actualization game. by cheating. No, by cheating. <laughs> Yet we're giving a lot of different. Um, entry points for data to, to, to really coordinate, was this person there, did they do this thing? Mm -hmm. And so there's community reflection, there's also self-reflection, and there's just the technology being able to, to, sit, to, to check, were they there, did they do that thing? Oof. 
Okay, and then let's talk about the, the data side of things. So then um, we have this beautiful uh, self-actualization graph that we get to see this data visualization of ourselves, how it overlays with others as we go and evolve our um, skill sets. And then rather than the way that the current it's so it, it's so primordial the way that we have the uh, IT world set up right now in terms of data ownership being mm, siloed, mm -hmm. um, data not being like portable or readable across cha echo chambers or silos, um, and ownership not getting like uh, rewarded for ownership. So, tell us about your strategy with data. Beautiful. So our entire model is not based on ad revenue, uh, which is the, that being the business model creates a, a very certain ecosystem. Yeah. Uh, it creates a very extractive model where people are like, it's free. Well, it's not free at all. And every bit, every aspect about who you are and all, everything, all your creativity, all of your IP that you're putting there is now a copy of that is now owned by another entity and they're doing whatever they want with it. And really, the whole thing is sell to the highest bidder and sell you products that we think you like. Yeah. So it's, it's again consumeristic. It's not focused on the economy that's emerging, which is the experiential economy. Yeah. The economy of experiences is focused on a very transactional product-based economy. To me, what we're moving into is that presence is the ultimate product. Embodiment is the one true value versus moving out of an economy of you're not enough, you need these things. So we're surrounded by things we don't even really want. We're spending money on things we don't want. Uh, most, the product life cycle of most things, it ends up in a landfill within six months, most things that we buy. So those systems are built on extracting who you are and then selling you to the highest bidder. That's not our model at all. You own your data in the ecosystem. Of course, the, the intelligence, the, the heart, brain, AI, and algorithms running the system need to have access to your profile to best match make you to the right content, content pathways, people, and experiences, but yeah. ultimately you own that data. You could always revoke those permissions. The system would be a little more blind in being able to offer you things that were really targeted for you. Yeah. But rather than selling you anything, the system's focused on matching you. Yeah. And it's focused on matching you to experiences, opportunities, people, and content. And then I Not pay products. a monthly So charge. it's a freemium model. Um, at least at its current iteration. Mm -hmm. I can't promise what it'll be well, when we actually future. release in yeah. 19 months. This is probably around the time we'll actually release. Um, right now, we're focusing on a freemium model, and the average subscription tier coming in at that is $9.99. Super easy. It's Super like what you easy. pay for Spotify it or anything is, else. It's so cheap, yeah. And then we yeah. have a um, so we have a transactional uh, model as well, so for content creators. So we're bringing in we're bringing in experts in the different dominions that we're launching with. What we're launching with are the most universally relevant skills, virtues, and life blocks. Right, so if you look at the, the top. Most relevant skills, virtues, and life blocks. Right, okay. or challenges, and, if and you want to look at that way. Okay, right. yeah, like challenges. Right, like so blocks, challenges okay. is, yeah. is an easier one to, to play with, but like scarcity, self-worth, doubt. There's, if you look at the top 15, Anyone in the world is dealing with multiple of those yeah. across each of those categories. Same thing with skill sets. Okay, what are the top things that are uh, a breakdown between human connection and the top things that companies are really looking for? So if you look at the list of all the things companies are looking for that are not being in training in school, you've got communication, collaboration, design thinking. So, mm -hmm. so we're launching with the most universally relevant that are applicable no matter what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And then we're building it, and, and then as we move into well, it'll be launched in the alpha, but also in the beta is when it'll become really active. We're building a content creation ecosystem. So it becomes an open source platform in a sense where, each, where individuals can become validated and verified and begin to create their own content and their own content pathways mm. within the system. Oh, cool. And, uh, and so circling back, you know, those launching content pathways as, as Kind of like a master class-ish type thing. Totally. Yeah. Except, except socialized with a really robust analytics dashboard. Yeah, yeah. And, and bringing it That's into great. the physical. So yeah, yeah. Getting, you have like your interface here for tracking, for connecting, matchmaking, but then how do I bring that out and actually apply that to this, to this avatar yes, and in this yes. video game? Yeah. Um, so okay. let's see, circling back. So going with the the launching content pathways and the oh, train of thought, stem stream of consciousness. Well, I think what was something good that you mentioned was that we have, uh, so it's gonna be end of 2020-ish is when you're looking at. At a, at a launch, And yeah. then what about now? Just speak yeah. about now, like yeah. um, this is being currently, is it, it's in the hands of young 
people? Like no, no, no. So but what? But what yeah. Lucian built was prior, prior. Yes. And so then you're okay. So then yeah, speak about like what the testing cycles are like right now. And yeah, sure, so. we're we're actually early in our our MVP cycle because we're looking at really building a landmark technology experience. Of course, yes. So all, all the functionality that we're talking about here, including the geoproximal alerting and a robust quest system. This is tough. Um, this is it's very a lot. tough. It's it, a big tech it, stack. It's, it's a big tech it's stack. It's a big design stack. As a lot of R&D, yeah. R particularly for what we're building into with full AR functionality, and also with the synthesis of some of the other integrated system, persona mapping systems that better inform the algorithms as to who you are. So we're looking at weaving in astrology, uh, gene keys, Enneagram. There's different profiling Damn. systems that we're weaving in. We've already been talking with the creators of some of these systems yeah. to really enhance the ability for the system to really know who you are and yeah. give you the best, Damn. the best alignment so it's points. it's not just about me submitting my own into each quadrant, but it's also about my birth date, birth time, birth location. Exactly. Um, also just Maybe I yeah submit my you know my, my maybe G maybe in the future slide, maybe, maybe absolutely I mean maybe and 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 those things can happen biofeedback sensor feedback you know how uh, cool would it be to it would get be amazing that would be so cool. whoa that you we were listen we we're recently learning from um, Nicholas Christakis that there is a certain uh, portion of our genome that has a uh, a lot of variation, and that portion of the genome is why we have such great variation in our faces, which oh. is like our unique identifiers as our face. Yeah. So you can tell, like in a sea of people, who the person is oh, that yeah. you like, like or co-create with, or is your partner, and yeah. all that type of stuff. So, how cool would it be to be able to like map North Stars with genetic sequence variations? That'd that be really would be really interesting. cool. That'd be yeah, super stuff cool. Stuff like that. Could yeah. Be cool. There's a lot of fun places to take it. Yeah. And again, you know, that would be the, way, the reason we can go that route. I mean, ultimately, this will be the, the the greatest compendium and library of human development on the planet. Yeah. And we can do that because whether or not it's fully distributed, which we're playing with to, to see where blockchain can hold this. We've been in explorations with Holochain and and different. We've been looking at different. Um, protocol layers that we can build on. Whether or not it's distributed, either way, it has full data integrity. Individuals own their data. And so from that place, people, as they begin to really learn and trust the brand, you know, and like really, really feel what it is that we're bringing forth, they're able to trust it and say, okay, I can give it biofeedback from sensors. I can, I can put my genetic data in there. I can have my, because I own this. This is my dashboard to who I am. And I can choose to share that with whoever individuals, corporations, how I choose and when I choose, but I own this data. And this is really just, the more I input, the more the system can better output and serve me. Yeah, yeah. We get, oh yeah, we have this, so we also showcase this one too? Meaningful so connection. yeah, this, one's, this one's fun. So we talked about it, it's just a fun visual, and this, this really starts to elucidate. What you're seeing here is on the screen, a matchmaking between two human beings and it's showing them what quests they're actively on together. So where are places they can partner together and quest into something together. Mm. Uh, and then what is, in this case, what would be, what is James offering the greatest support in? Like in this case we have Shannon and James. So what can James offer Shannon that's most aligned and what can Shannon offer? Or you throw it on ME2 quick so we can see this one too. Thank you. Yeah, so, so Shannon can offer what can Shannon offer James? And what can James offer Shannon? What can they? So this is showing all their alignment points on a screen. Where this gets real, and, and this is again asynchronous and synchronous. If you're choosing to play with geoproximal functionality, which you can turn off and off at any time, this could have been a conversation sparked at a gas pump where it's like, hey, we have 80% alignment, and I can immediately see what keys you hold for me and what keys I hold for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for, a, you actually can be a mentor to me in two things I'm looking for mentorship in. Yeah. And I've got something for you. So that's on a screen, but then this graphic kind of shows you, it kind of gives you a visual picture because we're not going to go into the whole, um, not into the whole visual deck of the AR componentry mm -hmm. of yeah, this yeah. because that's down the road. But it gives you an idea of what it would look like to first on a screen, but much more importantly with where, this right. is really the first to me real social benefit application of AR. People have been really trying to push AR, and yeah. a lot of it's in the gaming world, and it doesn't really have much social benefit value where it currently is. This is tough to parse by geolocation and just these unique identifiers of, you know, Alan is currently in this location, and Joyce is in this location, and they're coming together. Oh, well, beep, 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 there's a high 
proximity uh, person that has a high alignment and uh, you, you can embark on these quests together. I was mentioning this to you earlier, but it would, it would be interesting to know what, um, what gene culture coevolution, how this is actually yeah. going to affect us because so much of our cognition is used for identifying the fact right. that Joyous is this specific person and then I, I ask questions to get to know you right. and your North Star and right. then to see how much alignment you have with right. mine and to see if we should co-create. Right. But then if all of that cognitive uh, power and genetic evolution goes out the window because I don't need to do it anymore, but now I just see, ding, this is all the stuff about you. Then we go right into playing and creating Then we go right together. into playing and creating. Like, oh, so amazing. it's faster to get there, is. which is interesting. I just wonder then how that ends up affecting our actual biological evolution. That's that, that gene culture coevolution. It's a very, it's, it's just a cool it's, thing to I also know. think about it's along the, the day, way. You know, it's a very, it, and, and with anything, with any technology, because it's, it, it, technology has drastically changed the ways, and we can pop off this if we want. Okay, cool. Yeah. Sounds good. It's, it's drastically changed the ways that we have that we relate, you know? I mean, we don't have to retain information anymore. Google has it. I mean, people, I don't remember phone, who, who remembers phone numbers anymore? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it is interesting. Yeah. We are letting go of things. We are handing things off. And that is, again, the emergence of new consciousness. And who knows if it's good or bad? It's like any technology, we're on Democles' blade. Um, to me, to me, the benefit outweighs the risk. Yeah. in terms of removing the, the, I mean, when you, imagine you go to an event and you and I bump into each other and maybe we're like most people and we're just, we're drinking a little bit so we can like feel safe interacting. I mean, I don't think you drink and I don't, mm -hmm. but anyway, like a normal person, we're like, okay, I gotta like, okay, now I feel safe. Maybe, I feel loose to talk to people. Maybe the normal person doesn't do that to feel loose to talk to people. Well, maybe they don't. Yeah. Maybe they don't. I don't know why they would. I mean, yeah, you yeah, know. That's a, it's good. That, just a thought, yeah. From my when I was when I was drinking, when I was younger, it certainly helped me in social settings. Just be like it was like lubrication, mm -hmm. but still, then it's like okay, who are you? Where are you from? What do you do? There's some very sure, generic sure, questions. Sure. What do you do? And I don't really care about that. It's, I more care about who are what you? What, what, what is your north star? What, right what inspires away? you most? Yeah. yeah. What's yeah. your core purpose? Why yeah. you're on the planet? Exactly. That's what I ask my Uber drivers. I ask everyone. Likewise, yeah. Yeah. Everyone right away. So imagine just going to that right away. Yes. Right. And then taking out the, like we're two kids in a sandbox and we're kind of like feeling each other out to so just right away like, wow, okay, I chose to set my sensitivity to I only want to see people 80% aligned or I only want to see people aligned to my, to my, what I've defined as my current North Star that I'm developing in the system because there's, you can also de define your core purpose and then have things attached to that, different quests attached to that. So I can set the metrics for what I'm looking for but immediately be able to find it. I'm in a, an event, there's a thousand people may only be three or four people that are super relevant to me. And so just to have the ability to turn that on, turn that on, and then be alerted to that, and, and you have to have yours on too for that to work. Yeah. We have both have to say we want to be findable here, to, right? So that's, yeah, that's security and safety. Making the process more effective. Effective. And it's facilitating uh, less synchronicity. Facilitating totally. synchronicity, yeah, yeah. We can get right to the chase. If yeah. I know that you and I share a similar North Star, and I can also see how I could potentially support you in your life and you in mine, mm -hmm. immediately we can go into deeper connection, into collaboration, into creativity, instead of spending hours, days, maybe weeks, maybe months, parsing out where we can look, just get right away at a readout, like, okay, great, we're really aligned. How do we want to play? Let's get to know each other. Yeah. And then what is we are then? Great. Yeah. So we are is the parent of I am. We are is the larger consciousness, right? Ultimately, that's the vibration we're working toward. Yet, if you think about the universe as, you know, if you break that down into what it, the etymology, universe, one verse, one song, it's one song with all these infinite myriad of notes and, and tones within it. We each hold a unique organic signature, unique tone or frequency. If I haven't been connected to my I am, and I'm trying to play, and I'm trying to be the trombone player in the universe, but I'm really a drum player, mm, mm. what does that do to the rest of the universe, to the symphony? So we realized, you know, we are, we are as a broader, a broader um, container. It's designed to be a new paradigm incubator and management company model that takes some of the best practices. Like you look at what Google did with, okay, everyone, you get Friday to just create. Yeah. Create anything related to your passions, as long as it's related to like your skills and you know, kind of how you show up, but free range create. You're gonna get paid to create. Yeah. Some of their best products have come from that. So you can take what, 
Google and Zappos. And some, of these, some of these companies have kind of paved the way for how to innovate and, and, and allow more openness and creativity in the workplace. And then we have some, some things we won't dive into on this show, but really looking at how do we evolve the cultural parameters of holding a company. So we are going to really, a big focus for it is, is what is the culture that we're looking to engender as a company? How do we model that? How do we model that for the companies we incubate? How do we model that for the shareholders and the investors who are coming in, the social impact investors, to support these companies? And so we are as kind of ethos is to redefine our world, is to redefine how, how business operates. Um, and it's an inc fundamentally an incubator and management company for Evolved Enterprises. And its first flagship Evolved Enterprise is I Am. So the I Am we are is kind of the continuum of like, let's connect the world, billions of people to their I Am. Let's connect them to their full value, give them a sovereign interface to proclaim that, to embody that, to develop that, to actualize and monetize that. And then we can invite them into We Are. So we're actually mm -hmm. thinking about cultivating sponsorships and entrepreneurs. People are really coming online and really lighting up and stepping into their I Am, being able to help incubate some of the, the enterprises that are coming out of those individuals through We Are. And of course, other companies okay. as well. But that's, that's really the framework. Yeah. yeah. Damn, I love the vision with We Are as well. It's almost as though like there's all these good codes or good protocols that exist um, within some of the uh, most, especially new age organizations that then if could get um, synthesized into a new paradigm, like a spiritual workplace of I Amers that are all pursuing their North Stars plus co-creating. Um, I love it. I'm. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm huge. I'm huge on this. This is so much on the, on that principle of know thyself and socialize it, and know ourselves as a we as well. Um, okay, let's wrap with a couple thoughts. Perfect. We we good on yeah. On, we are, I, I yeah, feel I think great. So, if, if yeah. Too. Yeah. Okay. I just um, want to go through any other like portals or or oh dimensional gosh, hops. So totally. many. You can take us on the ne <laughs> on this next dimensionals portal hop. Are we in a simulation? Absolutely, 100%. Um, that's my belief. We can only share perspectives and beliefs. Um, you know, scientifically, like if you look at like how we've gone all the way in past the quark, like Planck, like the the deepest we've gotten in, it's all pixels. It's all pixels. Okay, like we're inside of a simulation. We're inside of a hologram. I consider the universe a quasi crystal of consciousness. It's it. It has a energetic matrix that's geometries and sound, and then those get so infinitely, intricately layered that they become reality. In the actuality, we, we create reality scapes, and we really believe it. It's amazing. Like we really believe in this in, in the game, and it, we want to because that's how we, we, and the me that's playing get to evolve and know ourselves and, and continue to expand the universe. <clears throat> universe is. Um, you know, I, I say from my direct experience, or I could say empirience, that we're in a simulation through some of the experiences I had, like the NDE I shared with you earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, they really showed me that, you know, this, this is a holographic reality, that our consciousness, from my belief, and our, our patterning translates from avatar to avatar, right? Like, oh, crap, I died in the game, reset, that's what happens here. It's like taking your clothes off. Uh, yet we carry it forward, which is why it's really important to be, you know, there's, <clears throat> there's people like the Dalai Lama that they like, reincarnate through cycles, and then the other, you know, Tibetan Lamas, they're, they're going around looking for, they know, they know that being when they find him, like, okay, you're five, we got to tell you, this is what you've been in the last 15 incarnations. So it's really important to realize, or to begin to play with the idea that there is more than this lifetime. There is something beyond death, mm. right? And realize that whatever you do here translates forward. And so in the simulation, even if I'm like, I'm gonna turn that screen off, it doesn't matter because it's playing on all these other screens. And so yes, I believe we're in a simulation, which is I think really fun when you can, when you can acknowledge that because you don't have to take it so seriously. It is serious and it's also playful and light. And you know? Oh my god. You can tune into a screen at any time, even if you choose to turn one off. Yeah, I'm really trying to get down to that, that 
quark and Planck length and see that pixelation and then also get how that is quasi crystal in this making this yeah. stuff. I'm trying to get that. We had a clear one on the show. I'm trying to get deeper. Yeah. I'm Garrett Lisi. I'm trying to get yeah. deeper into yeah. um, into what they're you know the theories are um, like Michio Kaku. These are very mm -hmm. interesting. Like what is going on at that such a small length and how is that making these items and and then what is source creating that this mm -hmm. process and I love that and we'll we can dive yeah deeper into this as. <laughs> Is on our next conversations, and I gain more um, understanding <laughs> of the of the subject. Matter. Cool, we could have a whole show just just on this. that yeah, subject. Totally, I love it. Okay, this is this is going to be the Silicon Valley stop for you guys. For you and Sandy, <laughs> we have so much to still talk I'll about. Have to okay. come back and visit more. I love it. Um, yeah, it kind of goes without saying that then that you believe that the process is that we come from source into these bodies to to learn these lessons in the school of Earth. Yeah and to express our own creative potential, our North Stars, that's kind of your yeah. thought process. Okay. Yeah, and life is the school, love is the lesson. So what do you love? Really, what do you love? Attune to that. that. That is teaching you how to be in alignment with your North Star. Life is the school, love is the lesson? Yeah. What the, do you love? Core yeah. lesson, yeah. Okay. What do you love? Who are you? Yeah. Yeah, who what, are you what are you choosing to become? Yeah. You know, What is that? If you really think about what lights you up most, what brings you most alive, what you love, tune into that. Dive more into that. Subscribe more to that. Because that's pointing you towards your North Star and the, and the reason that you're here. Because you have a unique mission. Generally, there's lots of subsets to it, but you have a purpose for being here. Everyone does. And, uh, and it's a great gift when you tap into it. And Joyce, what is the most beautiful thing in the world? The most beautiful thing in the world. So many myriad answers come to mind yeah. when you ask that question. Life, life is beautiful. It's an exquisite experience. Human life particularly is beautiful. It's, it's everything. It's like, it's raw. It can be, can be, yeah. and it's beautiful. What we get to feel and experience is freaking beautiful and it's unique from what I've experienced in having encounters with other types of intelligence and from NDEs and other ways of leaving the body. It's really unique. Human emotion is really unique. Very few species in the cosmos can feel like we do. Whoa. They don't have that spectrum. And I think that that is something that's, that's extremely beautiful. Yeah. Damn. So the, the spectrum of emotion and feeling potentials on this, on this planet as a human species is of the <coughs> most sought after. Yeah. <coughs> I was gonna wow. keep it. I was gonna, you know, I was gonna follow my beloved and and Talk say my children, family and my children because that's too, true. Yeah. yeah. Um, but really, when I look at it on a meta level, humanity is beautiful. It's all of it, and it's beautiful. And this life, this experience, is really beautiful. And specifically, in this moment, in this time, the amount of courageous, bold, audacious souls who are choosing to align to their north star, and what that's creating in terms of a social planetary transformation ripple effect, that's freaking beautiful. Yeah. Like the worse it gets, the better it gets. Great. Like there's all kinds of crazy shit happening on this planet right now. Great. Because on the contrast, it's so beautiful. Like yeah. the level of breakthrough and transcendence that we are on the tipping point of and we get to be creators of, because we're, we're actively co-creating it. You can choose to just sit there and be dormant and subscribe to what everyone else is creating, or you can actually step in and say, I'm creator, playing through this lens. This is who I am. And the more people I see doing that and all the really inspired projects and collaborations that are coming out, out of the space everywhere I look, that's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. The ascension of consciousness here, yeah. Wow, Joyce. Holy cow. I feel so good. Ah, oh, I feel as though you are have such an important role and important key, um, you and what you're making, because the endeavor to the North Star, to have that process be socialized and fun and gamified and exciting and leverage cutting edge technology to do it around the world, I love it. 
I'm good job. Thank you. Yeah, keep up the good Thank work. Thank you. Let's project. play. Let's play. Yeah. yeah. Let's yeah. play. This More is a global often, project. This is a global project. Yeah. We're calling in you and every other co-creator who feels inspired in any way to bring forward that technology framework and the consciousness behind it to the world. So thank you for everything you're doing with this show. Thank you, for bringing together some of the greatest and most inspired minds on the planet who are aligned with their North Star. And may we and we support these types of technologies that are coming through. I'm just a steward for what Likewise. I am is. Likewise, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a steward for the show, yeah. May we yeah. support and empower each other, all of each other. Let's hold each other's hands and walk each other home. <sighs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. It's such a pleasure. So much more co-creation. I'm so pumped and. Everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. We greatly appreciate it. We'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Let us know what you're thinking. Go have more conversations with your friends, your families, coworkers, people online on social media about things like I am, about self-actualization technologies. Have more conversations about this. Talk more about what your North Star is, what other people's North Stars are. Make that a more frequent conversation among yes, ourselves. Yes, please. Yes, please. Yes, please. And check out the links in the bio to playiam.com, also iamweare.xyz, iamjoyous.xyz, and also Joyce's Instagram and Facebook profiles. Shout out to Ori Shapiro for producing. Thank you very much, Ori. And also support the artists, the entrepreneurs, the organizations, the spiritual leaders around the world that you believe in. Support them, help them grow, support simulation. Our links are below as well. Our Patreon, PayPal links down there, our cryptocurrency link, and also you can design cool merch and get paid. Help support us, help us grow. And go and build the future, everyone. Manifest your dreams into the world. We love you very much. Thank you for tuning in. We'll see you soon. Peace.